This is a test of a Meanwell brand power supply that is used in conjunction with an Aristocraft train engineer. And here's the power supply. It's a fairly small unit, silver, just bare metal. It has a thermostatically controlled fan that will come on when it's needed. And it has uh, 115 VAC put into these terminals here with the ground lead here. And uh, it has this plastic shield over here and I put some additional duct tape so it's provide a bit of, bit of safety margin. And then these terminals here are meant for uh, the, the 24 volt output. It has a little indicator light here when it's powered, which it is now. And it has an adjustment uh, set screw here to fine tune the adjustment of the power supply so it, uh, you can set it right at 24 volts. It happens, <coughs> it so happens this one's this factory set at 24.2 and I left it as it is. And uh, at any rate, the red lead is plus and the minus lead is minus. Two terminals are dedicated if you want to use them both for the minus side and two terminals for the plus side. I'm using one terminal. And it's going into this early model train engineer, an Aristocraft train engineer ART, ART 5471. This is part of the, the major part of the train engine in the receiver and happens to have an optional fan. <laughs> And uh, this is the remote control for it. It's an RF control. And uh, I've wired it with a terminal block here. And uh, I have an oscilloscope here that's got the channels, channel, <coughs> channel A and channel B, or 1 and 2 rather, connected across the leads, the, the, <coughs> the power leads that are going to the track. And this is the test locomotive aristocraft. Uh, GP40 with uh, original motors that haven't uh, particularly failed yet. They're, they're notorious for uh, possibly failing. And this is the oscilloscope I'm using for the test. It's an a Tektronix 2465A model. And I have it set for um, 10 volts per centimeter. And the ground is in the center here. And I'll run the voltage up now, and it happens to be set for pulse width control, so we'll see pulses in this test. <laughs> and you can see it doesn't take much to get the initial pulse to start. <laughs> and when it will be, when it, there's enough energy to propel the locomotive with this pulse across the track, this voltage pulse, uh, we'll see the wheels starting to turn here. <laughs> So I'll increase the pulse width until I notice the wheels turning. And they're starting to turn here. And we can see the rear truck, the wheels are going. The front truck quite hasn't started yet. And now these locos are built with independent um, motors in each truck. There's no drive shaft between them like in smaller scales. <laughs> and so they can be a little different in characteristic. Here right now we can see the front truck is starting to turn the wheels. So I'll run it down in voltage until just so the there we go. So now both trucks, the wheels are turning. And we can see here on the oscilloscope. Uh, that's it's set for five microseconds per centimeter. So it's what maybe about eight, seven and a half, or eight centimeters at the fifty percent point of the pulse. <coughs> uh, as far as uh, the loco starting to have its wheels move, and as I increase the pulse, the pulse width, you can see it pretty much attains up here at oh, about 22 volts. And of course as, as the pulse width increases further the faster the, the motors will turn and the wheels will go around. We can kind of hear it here. So we can see it's 
pretty clean. There's not any real significant noise on the uh, pulse waveform here. And as I run it up, eventually it will create a flat line here. So that's the maximum speed. And it's about 22 volts in the case here. So now I'll run it back down. And the, the advantage of pulse width control, in addition to overcoming the, the mechanical inertia of the motors, is uh, the lights can, and the smoke unit in theory, <coughs> smoke unit is not powered on this thing, <coughs> but any, the switch is not activated, uh, nor is there fluid in it. <coughs> but uh, you can see the lights will perform uh, without any movement of the motors here. So as I keep running it down, uh, the lights, the regulator in this particular loco is probably about 5 volts, so, so when I get down low here in voltage, it, uh, the lights won't work. Mm. So at any rate, that's what it looks like. And again, this is with a Meanwell brand power supply. It's a model SP-240-24. And uh, it runs on 115 volts. AC 60 Hertz and uh, cost me about $68 with tax when I bought it here in California and uh, perhaps you could shop around on the net and get it a little bit cheaper but uh, avoid the tax <coughs> so it's it's a pretty good uh, pretty good buy so there you have it now I've powered down the unit and also powered and put set the the control here on the Aristocraft train engineer receiver from pulse width control to linear and uh, that uh, silk screen is not being blurred by the camera it's actually misprinted makes it look like it's blurred <coughs> when this thing was made so it's poor quality in that sense <laughs> but otherwise the uh, train engineer has been a very good unit I like them <laughs> so I've set it on linear mode and we can see the oscilloscope now in the uh, the ground point is right in the middle here, the middle trace. So as I increase the... You can see that and it's again 10 volts per centimeter. And you see both trucks, both motors are going. I'll maybe back it down here to... There we go. So both all the wheels are turning now. At the point where it's about um, oh, about slightly shy of four volts, maybe three to three and a half volts, or three to almost four volts, and according to this, <coughs> ten volts per centimeter. So now I'll increase the speed, increase the voltage that is to increase the speed of the loco. Turn the intensity down here a bit. <coughs> the scope. <laughs> you can see it's going along pretty good now. And that's the maximum. And it looks like it's 21 volts in the linear there. back down and I have to increase the intensity here a bit on the scope <coughs> and now we'll change polarity we'll see it go negative <coughs> the logo. 
Coco. The wheel's turning. Let the lights start to come on here. I'll run it back down and up in a little bit. There, the lights start to come come on about oh looks like minus probably minus nine volts. <laughs> Like maybe minus 21 and a half volts or so. And retained. Oh, it went to minus 22. Now I'll slow it down. Change polarity back to what it was. And there you have it. It looked like a fairly clean waveform. It was just a flat line level uh, without any noise on it.